35 Naso take up. Naso, take up. Perisha 35 Naso, take. Torah be midva. Numbers, 421-789. Hath drash oft him. Judges, 13-225. Berit Hadash Yochanan. John, 753-811. Acts 21-17-3. Torah be midva. Numbers, 421-789. 421 Adonai said to Moshe. Take a census of the descendants of Gershon also, by clans and families. Count all those between 30 and 50 years old, all who will enter the court doing the work of serving in the tent of meeting. The Gershon families are to be responsible for serving and for transporting loads. They are to carry the curtains of the tabernacle, the tent of meeting, its covering, the fine leather covering above it, the screen for the entrance to the tent of meeting, the tapestries for the courtyard, and the screen for the entrance to the courtyard by the tabernacle and around the altar, along with the ropes and all the utensils they need for their service. And they are to do the work connected with these things. Aharon and his sons are to supervise all the work of the Gershon clan in transporting loads and serving, and to assign them who is to carry what. This is how the Gershon families are to serve in the tent of meeting, and they are to be under the direction of Itamar the son of Aharon the Kohen. As for the descendants of Imrari, Take a census by clans and families of all those between 30 and 50 years old, all who will be in the court doing the work of serving in the tent of meeting. Their service for the tent of meeting will be to carry the frames, crossbars, posts and sockets of the tabernacle. Also the posts for the surrounding courtyard, with their sockets, tent pegs, ropes and other accessories, and everything having to do with their service. You are to assign particular loads to specific persons by name. This is how the Imrari families are to serve in the tent of meeting, directed by Itamar the son of the Haran the Kohen. Moshe, Aharon and the community leaders took a census of the descendants of Kehat by their clans and families. All those between 30 and 50 years old who were part of the corps serving in the tent of meeting, registered by their families, they numbered 2,750. These are the ones counted from the Kehat families of all those serving in the tent of meeting, whom Moshe and Aharon enumerated in keeping with the order given by Adonai through Moshe, the census of the descendants of Gershon, by their clans and families, all those between 30 and 50 years old who were part of the corps serving in the tent of meeting, yielded 2,630, registered by their clans and families. These are the ones counted from the families of the descendants of Gershon of all those serving in the tent of meeting, whom Moshe and Aharon enumerated, in keeping with the order given by Adonai. The census of the families of the descendants of Imrari, by their clans and families, all those between 30 and 50 years old who were part of the corps serving in the tent of meeting, yielded 3, 200, registered by their families. These are the ones counted from the families of the descendants of Imrari, whom Moshe and Aharon enumerated, in keeping with the order given by Adonai through Moshe. The census of the Lvim, whom Moshe, Aharon and the leaders of Israel enumerated by their clans and families. All those between 30 and 50 years old who were part of those working to serve and working to carry loads in the tent of meeting, yielded a total of 8,580 persons. According to Adonai's order they were appointed by Moshe, each one to his specific service or work. They were also enumerated, as Adonai had ordered Moshe. 5 1 Adonai said to Moshe, order the people of Israel to expel from the camp everyone with tzeret, everyone with a discharge and whoever is unclean because of touching a corpse. Both male and female you must expel, put them outside the camp, so that they won't defile their camp, where I live among you. The people of Israel did this and put them outside the camp. The people of Israel did what Adonai had said to Moshe. Adonai said to Moshe, tell the people of Israel, when a man or woman commits any kind of sin against another person and thus breaks faith with Adonai, he incurs guilt. He must confess the sin which he has committed, and he must make full restitution for his guilt at 20% and give it to the victim of this sin. But if the person has no relative to whom restitution can be made for the guilt, then what is given in restitution for guilt will belong to Adonai, that is, to the Kohen in addition to the Ram of Atonement through which atonement is made for him. Every contribution which the people of Israel consecrate and present to the Kohen will belong to him. Anything an individual consecrates will be his own, to allocate among the Kohanim, but what a person gives to the Kohen will belong to him. 11 Adonai said to Moshe, Tell the people of Israel, if a man's wife goes astray and is unfaithful to him, that is, if another man goes to bed with her without her husband's knowledge, so that she becomes impure secretly, and there is no witness against her, and she was not caught in the act. Then, if a spirit of jealousy comes over him, and he is jealous of his wife, and she has become impure or, 
for that matter, if the spirit of jealousy comes over him, and he is jealous of his wife, and she has not become impure he is to bring his wife to the Kohen, along with the offering for her, two quarts of barley flour on which he has not poured olive oil or put frankincense, because it is a grain offering for jealousy, a grain offering for remembering, for recalling guilt to mind, the Kohen will bring her forward and place her before Adonai, the Kohen will put holy water in a clay pot, and then the Kohen will take some of the dust on the floor of the tabernacle and put it in the water, the Kohen will place the woman before Adonai, unbind the woman's hair and put the grain offering for remembering in her hands, the grain offering for jealousy, while the Kohen has in his hand the water of embitterment and cursing, the Kohen will make her swear by saying to her, if no man has gone to bed with you, if you have not gone astray to make yourself unclean while under your husband's authority, then be free from this water of embitterment and cursing, but if you have in fact gone astray while under your husband's authority and become unclean, because some man other than your husband has gone to bed with you, then the Kohen is to make the woman swear with an oath that includes a curse, the Kohen will say to the woman, may Adonai make you an object of cursing and condemnation among your people by making your private parts shrivel and your abdomen swell up, may this water that causes the curse go into your inner parts and make your abdomen swell and your private parts shrivel up, and the woman is to respond, Amen, Amen, the Kohen is to write these curses on a scroll, wash them off into the water of embitterment and make the woman drink the water of embitterment and cursing the water of cursing will enter her and become bitter, then the Kohen is to remove the grain offering for jealousy from the woman's hand, wave the grain offering before Adonai and bring it to the altar, the Kohen is to take a handful of the grain offering as its reminder portion and make it go up in smoke on the altar, afterwards, he is to make the woman drink the water, when he has made her drink the water, then, if she is unclean and has been unfaithful to her husband, the water that causes the curse will enter her and become bitter, so that her abdomen swells and her private parts shrivel up, and the woman will become an object of cursing among her people, but if the woman is not unclean but clean, then she will be innocent and will have children. This is the law for jealousy when either a wife under her husband's authority goes astray and becomes unclean, or the spirit of jealousy comes over her husband and he becomes jealous of his wife. Then he is to place the woman before Adonai, and the Kohen is to deal with her in accordance with all of this law. The husband will be clear of guilt, but the wife will bear the consequences of her guilt. 6 1 Adonai said to Moshe, Tell the people of Israel, when either a man or a woman makes a special kind of vow, the vow of Anazir, consecrating himself to Adonai. He is to abstain from wine and other intoxicating liquor, he is not to drink vinegar from either source, he is not to drink grape juice, and he is not to eat grapes or raisins. As long as he remains in Azir he is to eat nothing derived from the grapevine, not even the grape skins or the seeds, throughout the period of his vow as an Azir, he is not to shave his head. Until the end of the time for which he has consecrated himself to Adonai he is to be holy he is to let the hair on his head grow long. Throughout the period for which he has consecrated himself to Adonai, he is not to approach a corpse. He is not to make himself unclean for his father, mother, brother or sister when they die, since his consecration to God is on his head. Throughout the time of his being in Azir he is holy for Adonai. If someone next to him dies very suddenly, so that he defiles his consecrated head, then he is to shave his head on the day of his purification, he is to shave it on the seventh day. On the eighth day he is to bring two doves or two young pigeons to the Kohen at the entrance to the tent of meeting. The Kohen is to prepare one as a sin offering and the other as a burnt offering and thus make atonement for him, inasmuch as he sinned because of a dead person. That same day he is to reconsecrate his head, he is to consecrate to Adonai the full period of his being in Azir by bringing a male lamb in its first year as a guilt offering. The previous days will not be counted, because his consecration became defiled. This is the law for the Nazir when his period of consecration is over he is to be brought to the entrance of the tent of meeting, where he will present his offering to Adonai one male lamb in its first year without defect as a burnt offering, one female lamb in its first year without defect as a sin offering, one ram without defect as peace offerings, a basket of matzah, loaves made of fine flour mixed with olive oil, unleavened wafers spread with olive oil, their grain offering and their drink offerings. The Kohen is to bring them before Adonai, offer his sin offering, his burnt offering, and his ram as a sacrifice of peace offerings to Adonai, with the basket of matzah. The Kohen will also offer the grain offering and drink offering that go with the peace offering. The Nazir will shave his consecrated head at the entrance to the tent of meeting, take the hair removed from his consecrated head and put it on the fire under the sacrifice of peace offerings. When the ram has been boiled, 
the Kohen is to take its shoulder, one loaf of matzah from the basket and one unleavened wafer, and place them in the hands of the Nazir. After he has shaved his consecrated head, the Kohen is to wave them as a wave offering before Adonai. This is set aside for the Kohen, along with the breast for waving and the raised up thigh. Following that, the Nazir may drink wine. This is the law for the Nazir who makes a vow and for his offering to Adonai for his being an Nazir in addition to anything more for which he has sufficient means. In keeping with whatever vow he makes, he must do it according to the law for the Nazir. Adonai said to Moshe, Speak to Aharon and his sons, and tell them that this is how you are to bless the people of Israel. You are to say to them, By Virechka Adonai Vishmirecha, May Adonai bless you and keep you, Yea Adonai Panavalikta Vichuneka, May Adonai make his face shine on you and show you his favor, Yes Adonai Panavalikta Vyasamel Pashalom, May Adonai lift up his face toward you and give you peace. In this way they are to put my name on the people of Israel, so that I will bless them. 7 1 On the day Moshe finished putting up the tabernacle, he anointed and consecrated it, all its furnishings, and the altar with its utensils. After anointing and consecrating them, the leaders of Israel, who were heads of their father's clans, made an offering. These were the tribal leaders in charge of those counted in the census. They brought their offering before Adonai. Six covered wagons and twelve oxen a wagon for every two leaders and for each an oxen presented them in front of the tabernacle. Adonai said to Moshe, Receive these from them, they are to be used for the service in the tent of meeting, give them to the LVIM, to each as needed for his duties. So Moshe took the wagons and oxen and gave them to the LVIM, he gave two wagons and four oxen to the descendants of Gershon, in keeping with the needs of their duties. Four wagons and eight oxen he gave to the descendants of Imreri, in keeping with the needs of their duties, directed by Itamar the son of the Haran the Kohen. But to the descendants of Kehat he gave none, because their duties involve the holy articles, which they carried on their own shoulders. The leaders brought the offering for dedicating the altar on the day it was anointed. The leaders brought their offering before the altar, and Adonai said to Moshe, they are to present their offerings to dedicate the altar, each leader on his own day. Nachan the son of Aminadav, from the tribe of Yehuda, presented his offering on the first day. He offered one silver dish weighing 130 shekels, three and a quarter pounds, and one silver basin of 70 shekels, using the sanctuary shekel, one and three quarters pounds. Both were full of fine flour mixed with olive oil for a grain offering, one gold pound of ten shekels, one quarter pound, full of incense, one young bull, one ram, one male lamb in its first year as a burnt offering, one male goat as a sin offering, and, for the sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five male goats and five male lambs in their first year, this was the offering of Nachan the son of Aminadav. On the second day in Daniel the son of Tzedur, leader of Yisachar, presented his offering. He offered one silver dish weighing 130 shekels, three and a quarter pounds, and one silver basin of 70 shekels, using the sanctuary shekel, one and three quarters pounds. Both were full of fine flour mixed with olive oil for a grain offering, one gold pound of ten shekels, one quarter pound, full of incense, one young bull, one ram, one male lamb in its first year as a burnt offering, one male goat as a sin offering, and, for the sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five male goats and five male lambs in their first year, this was the offering of Entanel the son of Tzedur. On the third day Eliav the son of Helen, leader of Zedvulan, presented his offering. He offered one silver dish weighing 130 shekels, three and a quarter pounds, and one silver basin of 70 shekels, using the sanctuary shekel, one and three quarters pounds. Both were full of fine flour mixed with olive oil for a grain offering, one gold pound of ten shekels, one quarter pound, full of incense, one young bull, one ram, one male lamb in its first year as a burnt offering, one male goat as a sin offering, and, for the sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five male goats and five male lambs in their first year. This was the offering of Eliav the son of Helen. On the fourth day was Elitza the son of Shjur, leader of the descendants of Reuven. He offered one silver dish weighing 130 shekels, three and a quarter pounds, and one silver basin of 70 shekels, using the sanctuary shekel, one and three quarters pounds. Both were full of fine flour mixed with olive oil for a grain offering, one gold pound of ten shekels, one quarter pound, full of incense, one young bull, one ram, one male lamb in its first year as a burnt offering, one male goat as a sin offering, and, for the sacrifice of peace offerings, 
two oxen, five rams, five male goats and five male lambs in their first year, this was the offering of the lips of a son of Shija, on the fifth day was Shlumiel the son of Tzurashadeh, leader of the descendants of Shimon. He offered one silver dish weighing 130 shekels, three and a quarter pounds, and one silver basin of 70 shekels, using the sanctuary shekel, one and three quarters pounds. Both were full of fine flour mixed with olive oil for a grain offering, one gold pound of ten shekels, one quarter pound, full of incense, one young bull, one ram, one male lamb in its first year as a burnt offering, one male goat as a sin offering, and, for the sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five male goats and five male lambs in their first year, this was the offering of Shlumiel the son of Tzurashadeh, on the sixth day was Eliasaf the son of Duel, leader of the descendants of Gad, he offered one silver dish weighing 130 shekels, three and a quarter pounds, and one silver basin of 70 shekels, using the sanctuary shekel, one and three quarters pounds, both were full of fine flour mixed with olive oil for a grain offering, one gold pound of ten shekels, one quarter pound, full of incense, one young bull, one ram, one male lamb in its first year as a burnt offering, one male goat as a sin offering, and, for the sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five male goats and five male lambs in their first year, this was the offering of Eliasaf the son of Duel. On the seventh day was Elishama the son of Amihad, leader of the descendants of Ephraim. He offered one silver dish weighing 130 shekels, three and a quarter pounds, and one silver basin of 70 shekels, using the sanctuary shekel, one and three quarters pounds. Both were full of fine flour mixed with olive oil for a grain offering, one gold pound of ten shekels, one quarter pound, full of incense, one young bull, one ram, one male lamb in its first year as a burnt offering, one male goat as a sin offering, and, for the sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five male goats and five male lambs in their first year, this was the offering of Elishama the son of Amihad. On the eighth day was Gamliel the son of Pedatsa, leader of the descendants of Amnasha. He offered one silver dish weighing 130 shekels, three and a quarter pounds, and one silver basin of 70 shekels, using the sanctuary shekel, one and three quarters pounds. Both were full of fine flour mixed with olive oil for a grain offering, one gold pound of ten shekels, one quarter pound, full of incense, one young bull, one ram, one male lamb in its first year as a burnt offering, one male goat as a sin offering, and, for the sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five male goats and five male lambs in their first year, this was the offering of Gamliel the son of Pedatsa, on the ninth day was Evidon the son of Jidoni, leader of the descendants of Benjamin, he offered one silver dish weighing 130 shekels, three and a quarter pounds, and one silver basin of 70 shekels, using the sanctuary shekel, one and three quarters pounds, both were full of fine flour mixed with olive oil for a grain offering, one gold pound of ten shekels, one quarter pound, full of incense, one young bull, one ram, one male lamb in its first year as a burnt offering, one male goat as a sin offering, and, for the sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five male goats and five male lambs in their first year, this was the offering of Avidan the son of Jidoni, on the tenth day was Achiza the son of Amishadeh, leader of the descendants of Dan, he offered one silver dish weighing 130 shekels, three and a quarter pounds, and one silver basin of 70 shekels, using the sanctuary shekel, one and three quarters pounds, both were full of fine flour mixed with olive oil for a grain offering, one gold pound of ten shekels, one quarter pound, full of incense, one young bull, one ram, one male lamb in its first year as a burnt offering, one male goat as a sin offering, and, for the sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five male goats and five male lambs in their first year, this was the offering of Achiza the son of Amishadeh, on the eleventh day was Pagiel the son of Ochran, leader of the descendants of Asher, he offered one silver dish weighing 130 shekels, three and a quarter pounds, and one silver basin of 70 shekels, using the sanctuary shekel, one and three quarters pounds, both were full of fine flour mixed with olive oil for a grain offering, one gold pound of ten shekels, one quarter pound, full of incense, one young bull, one ram, one male lamb in its first year as a burnt offering, one male goat as a sin offering, and, for the sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, 
five rams, five male goats and five male lambs in their first year, this was the offering of Pagiel the son of Ukran, on the twelfth day was Akira the son of Enon, leader of the descendants of Naphtali, he offered one silver dish weighing one hundred and thirty shekels, three and a quarter pounds, and one silver basin of seventy shekels, using the sanctuary shekel, one and three quarters pounds, both were full of fine flour mixed with olive oil for a grain offering, one gold pan of ten shekels, one quarter pound, full of incense, one young bull, one ram, one male lamb in its first year as a burnt offering, one male goat as a sin offering, and, for the sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five male goats and five male lambs in their first year, this was the offering of Akira the son of Enon. This was the offering for dedicating the altar which was given by the leaders of Israel on the day of its anointing twelve silver dishes, twelve silver basins and twelve gold pans. Each silver dish weighed one hundred and thirty shekels, three and a quarter pounds, and each basin seventy shekels, one and three quarters pounds. All the silver of the vessels weighed two thousand four hundred shekels, using the sanctuary shekel, just over sixty pounds. The twelve gold pans, full of incense, weighed ten shekels apiece using the sanctuary shekel, one quarter pound, all the gold of the pans weighed 120 shekels, three pounds. Mafti, 87 The lives took for the burnt offering consisted of 12 bulls, 12 rams and 12 male lambs in their first year, with their grain offering. There were 12 male goats for a sin offering. The lives took for the sacrifice of peace offerings consisted of 24 bulls, 60 rams, 60 male goats and 60 male lambs in their first year. This was the offering for dedicating the altar after it had been anointed. When Moshe went into the tent of meeting in order to speak with Adonai, he heard a voice speaking to him from above the ark cover on the ark for the testimony, from between the two Keruvim, and he spoke to him, Haftrash oft him, Judges, 13 to 25, 13 to there was a man from Tzorah from the family of Dan, whose name was Manoch, his wife was barren, childless. The angel of Adonai appeared to the woman and said to her, Listen. You are barren, you haven't had a child, but you will conceive and bear a son. Now, therefore, be careful not to drink any wine or other intoxicating liquor, and don't eat anything unclean, for indeed you will conceive and bear a son. No razor is to touch his head, because the child will be in as earful God from the womb. Moreover, he will begin to rescue Israel from the power of the Pelishtim. The woman came and told her husband, she said, A man of God came to me, his face was fearsome like that of the angel of God, I did it ask him where he came from, and he didn't tell me his name, but he said to me, listen, you will conceive and bear a son, so now don't drink any wine or other intoxicating liquor, and don't eat anything unclean, because the child will be in as earful God from the womb until the day he dies, then Manoch prayed to Adonai, please, Adonai, let the man of God you sent come again to us and teach us what we should do for the child who will be born, God paid attention to what Manoch said, and the angel of God came again to the woman as she sat in the field, but her husband Manoch wasn't with her. The woman hurried and ran to tell her husband, Here, that man, the one who came to me the other day, he's come again. Manoch got up, followed his wife, went to the man and said to him, Are you the man who spoke to the woman? He answered, I am. Manoch asked, Now, when what you said comes true, what are the guidelines for raising the child? What should be done for him? The angel of Adonai said to Manoch, the woman should take care to do everything I said to her. She shouldn't eat anything that comes from a grapevine, she shouldn't drink wine or other intoxicating liquor, and she shouldn't eat anything unclean, she should do everything I ordered her to do. Manoch said to the angel of Adonai, please stay with us a bit longer, so that we can cook a young goat for you. The angel of Adonai said to Manoch, even if I do stay, I won't eat your food, and if you prepare a burnt offering, you must offer it to Adonai for Manoch did not know that he was the angel of Adonai. Manoch said to the angel of Adonai, Tell us your name, so that when your words come true we can honor you. The angel of Adonai answered him, Why are you asking about my name? It is wonderful. Manoch took the kid and the grain offering and offered them on the rock to Adonai. Then, with Manoch and his wife looking on, the angel did something wonderful as the flame went up toward the sky from the altar. The angel of Adonai went up in the flame from the altar. When Manoch and his wife saw it, they fell to the ground on their faces, but the angel of Adonai did not appear again to Manoch or his wife, then Manoch realized it had been the angel of Adonai. Manoch said to his wife, We will surely die, because we have seen God. But his wife said to him, If Adonai had wanted to kill us, 
he wouldn't have accepted a burnt offering and a grain offering from us, and he wouldn't have shown us all this or told us such things at this time. The woman bore a son and called him Shimshon, Samson. The child grew, and Adonai blessed him. The spirit of Adonai began to stir him when he was in the camp of Dan, between Sora and Ashtaol. Berit had Ashiochanan, John, 753 8 11, Acts 21 17 32. John, 753 Then they all left, each one to his own home at one, but Yeshua went to the Mount of Olives. At daybreak, he appeared again in the temple court, where all the people gathered around him, and he sat down to teach them. The Torah teachers and the Pirushim brought in a woman who had been caught committing adultery and made her stand in the center of the group. Then they said to him, Rabbi, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in our Torah, Moshe commanded that such a woman be stoned to death. What do you say about it? They said this to trap him, so that they might have ground for bringing charges against him. But Yeshua bent down and began writing in the dust with his finger. When they kept questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, the one of you who is without sin, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. Then he bent down and wrote in the dust again. On hearing this, they began to leave, one by one, the older ones first, until he was left alone, with the woman still there, standing up. Yeshua said to her, Where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, sir. Yeshua said, Neither do I condemn you. Now go, and don't sin any more. Acts 21 17 in Yerushalayim. The brothers received us warmly. The next day Shaul and the rest of us went to see Yarkov, and all the elders were present. After greeting them, Shaul described in detail each of the things God had done among the Gentiles through his efforts. On hearing it, they praised God. But they also said to him, You see, brother, how many tens of thousands of believers there are among the Judeans, and they are all zealots for the Torah. Now what they have been told about you is that you are teaching all the Jews living among the Gentiles to apostatize from Moshe telling them not to have A.B. read Miller for their sons and not to follow the traditions. What, then, is to be done? They will certainly hear that you have come, so do what we tell you. We have for men who are under a vow. Take them with you, be purified with them, and pay the expenses connected with having their heads shaved. Then everyone will know that there is nothing to these rumors which they have heard about you, but that, on the contrary, you yourself stay in line and keep the Torah. However, in regard to the Gentiles who have come to trust in Yeshua, we all joined in writing them a letter with our decision that they should abstain from what had been sacrificed to idols, from blood, from what is strangled and from fornication. The next day Shaul took the men, purified himself along with them and entered the temple to give notice of when the period of purification would be finished and the offering would have to be made for each of them. The seven days were almost up when some unbelieving Jews from the province of Asia saw him in the temple, stirred up all the crowd and grabbed him. Men of Israel, help! They shouted. This is the man who goes everywhere teaching everyone things against the people, against the Torah and against this place. And now he has even brought some Gentiles into the temple and defiled this holy place. They had previously seen Trophimus from Ephesus in the city with him and assumed that Shaul had brought him into the temple. The whole city was aroused, and people came running from all over. They seized Shaul and dragged him out of the temple, and at once the gates were shut. But while they were attempting to kill him, word reached the commander of the Roman battalion that all Yerushalayim was in turmoil. Immediately he took officers and soldiers and charged down upon them. As soon as they saw the commander, they quit beating Shaul.